I've been looking for a camera that's small enough to climb up a mountain with, but still has the ability to shoot raw video. This is the Zcam E2 M4. It's a powerful cube-shaped cinema camera that resembles a RED. However, it's much cheaper, and it's an interesting choice if you're ready to work with raw video. Welcome to Basecamp 3.0. So over the last couple of weeks, I've been moving. That's why I haven't really been posting much on the channel. And this is my office. This is my editing bay. I just built this out. Still got a lot of work to do. I also have a studio that I'm building out right now, which that has a lot more work to do, but it's going to be a good home base that I'm going to have for a long time. So today we're talking about the Zcam E2 M4. And you know, I was looking for a camera that could shoot raw, but then not have a bunch of issues like things like overheating or just you know being way too cumbersome with the whole editing workflow. So I picked up a Zcam E2 M4. This is the flagship body. So this camera, they've rehoused the E2 sensor. And you might think, well, why wouldn't you go get the 6K sensor or you know one of their other flagship models? And the reason is. I've been shooting Micro Four Thirds for a long time, so the E2 is a Micro Four Thirds sensor. And this camera can shoot 4K 60 frames per second RAW. So essentially, I'm shooting on the GH5 right now, and the GH5 is a great camera to work with, however, you don't have the RAW capabilities. And what you get with RAW is more flexibility in post to do things like color grading. Now, a lot of you might be asking, well, what about the Black Magic? Because that obviously is a 4K sensor, also is Micro Four Thirds. The issue is if you're using black magic, you have to use resolve to convert the footage. With the Zcam, it shoots ProRes RAW over the HDMI cable to the Ninja V, and when you bring that into Final Cut, it just works. Like it's super easy to use. It's optimized for a Mac and Final Cut Pro workflow. So for me, being a Final Cut user, I didn't want to have to jump through a bunch of hoops and convert footage. I want to just bring footage into my computer and start grading right away. So before we get into some details around this camera and you know how it works and my thoughts around working with it, let's first dig into what is RAW. Without going into crazy detail of the technical process, think of RAW like a film negative. It's the footage that you're getting straight from the sensor without any additional processing. So you're getting the most amount of data from your camera, which gives you the most amount of flexibility in your editing software. More ability to edit and color grade, but it does come at a cost. So let's talk about three problems that I've found with this camera. One is the cost, it's $1,500, for the body, that doesn't include everything else around this camera. The second is that there's a lot of features on this camera that you might miss. So things like in-body stabilization, good autofocus, like this is a cinema camera, it's not a mirrorless hybrid camera, so you have to work with it a little bit differently. And then the third problem is that the data is just unbelievably massive. I mean, the file size that you get out of this camera is huge. It's any camera that's shooting ProRes RAW, but you're gonna be dealing with a lot of data when working with the Zcam. All right, so let's talk about the build out. This is my camera fully kitted out with everything that I've found 
I need to make the Z cam work. And uh, we are now in the studio. Like I said, this space is a lot more rough. This is just a mess all over there. There's tons of storage, like it's a great space, but I really gotta build it out. And you know, it came with all these white cabinets, so I gotta rip all this out and change it because I really want to have a much different look and feel. But for now, it's gonna work. So for the build out, let's talk about what you would need to make this camera work. And I'm specifically talking about what you need to make it work for ProRes RAW because the Atomos Ninja V, the monitor that you see on top here, is essential to be able to shoot ProRes RAW. Now you can shoot internally on this camera, you can shoot Z Cam RAW, but again, like I said earlier, I don't wanna deal with converting footage and you can't bring that footage directly into Final Cut and start working with it. However, when you are shooting internally, you still can get 10-bit ProRes but it's not the full capabilities of this camera. If you're gonna shoot with the Z cam and you really want the most, you gotta shoot ProRes RAW. So the first part to the build out is your camera body. And the new flagship E2 is only $1,500. And what's great about having a flagship body size is that if I wanna upgrade in the future, I can get the 6K and all of the attachments that I'm using will still work fine, I just need to switch out the camera body. Now, on the camera, you actually have a bunch of different screw mounts, however, it's easier to work with when you attach a cage. So this is the one from Condor that's around $120. Because there's no monitor for the Z cam, you have to build one out. The Ninja V records ProRes RAW, it's super small, and I've been using it for a long time. Next, you're gonna need SSD drives to record on, and you're gonna need a lot of data. So one terabyte Atom X SSD drive is about $400. Now I also got a 256 CFast card just so that I could use the 4K 120 frames per second slow motion. That is something that you can't record on the Atomos and you're gonna have to record internally. Now to mount things to your cameras, you're gonna need a bunch of attachments like this monitor mount and you know, all the attachments that I've bought have run me around $100. Also, I need a cable that allows me to transmit the signal properly and the one from Atomos is around $50. Now for audio, there's two solutions. And if you wanna use an XLR, they have a five pin Limo XLR, which is a weird attachment. So you have to buy converters for that. And I bought a few just so I could use this port and they're around $50. Last, you'll need batteries and lenses, which it all depends on what you wanna shoot on. And so all in, to make this camera functional to shoot ProRes RAW, the cost was around $2,500 and that's not including lenses. So for stabilizing the Z cam, I found that using the Fiutech 4500 with the ring is the most practical that I've worked with so far. I just have these little arms on top with these Jiyun clips. So I can pop my monitor on and off, put the camera body on here. The best thing about the Z cam is that it's modular and you don't have to have the monitor on the camera, you can put it on the ring. So all the gimbal work that I've been doing, I've been using this setup and it's just super easy to pop on here, mount it really quick, and start shooting some footage. You're gonna have to use a gimbal if you want stability, which is part of the reason why I have two handles instead of one. So I have a handle on both sides, and that allows me to get a dual grip so that I can get more stable shots. Again, there's no image stabilization, so when you're using this, you're always gonna have a little bit of shake to your footage. With two handles, you can get the image stabilized pretty good, and then you add a little bit of stabilization and post and it looks like you know, you're know you using a gimbal or you're using a image stabilizers. So the wood handles that I have are just these two wooden grips and they're from, I don't mean, what was that company? It was, it's on the screen right now. And I used to use this shoulder rig and it came with these hand grips. And I like the fact that your left-handed grip is just a ball so you can use it in different ways. Now I'm gonna add links to all of this gear in a kit down in the description. And things like these, just replace them with different styles of handle, but having a handle on both sides does make this a much more usable camera. But you, you're gonna have to get creative and shoot it in different ways that you normally wouldn't with like a hybrid. You're gonna have to use your body and really brace yourself. But because of where the monitor is, you can do this and see the image nice and clear. So let's talk about using this camera and you know my thoughts around things that I'm discovering as I shoot more with it. When you're shooting ProRes RAW, it's actually hard to gauge where you should set your exposure levels. When you use the false colors of the zebras, then it might look like that you're getting a good image on screen, but when you bring it back to the editing, you're too overexposed or too underexposed. So, Zcam provides a bunch of LUTs, 
and I actually found one that shows right where the image is clipping. And I've been using this as just a guide when I'm out shooting to see if an image is clipping or not. And when your image isn't clipping, you can bring that data back and you can recover it. So here's just a shot straight out of camera. And when it's color graded, this is what it looks like. However, if you are clipping, there's nothing you can do about it. And it actually creates this weird pink effect, which you can go through and tweak the footage. And I'm surprised. I've actually been able to recover some super overexposed footage and be able to actually make it look pretty decent. And when you're shooting raw, especially on the Z cam, you want to overexpose the footage as much as possible without clipping because the noise on this camera is pretty apparent. So if you're shooting underexposed, you're going to get this noise pattern that just looks pretty awful. So you want to get the brightest images that you can out of this camera and then dial it back. And that's the beauty of working in raw is that you can bring all that data back. Now, like I said earlier, you have this weird five pin XLR adapter, but you also have on the right side an adapter for 3.5. So just your typical microphone input for, you know, small microphones. So if you were to use something like the Rode Wireless Go, a Deity, you know, onboard shotgun mic, just plug it right in on the side. Now, one thing that's really cool that I haven't really seen a whole lot of people talk about is the fact that you can control each channel on the camera independently. If you are recording, say, an interview, and you don't know how much dynamics is gonna be in the person's conversation, you can record one channel higher and one channel lower so that you never peak on the audio. Or if you wanna use a Y split cable and have two audio inputs, say you're doing an interview of two different people, well, you can control each channel independently. So by just adding a cheap Y cable, you all of a sudden have two channels that you can work with. Now, those channels take over the internal audio and the internal audio is scratch. I wouldn't really use it for much, but if you did wanna use the XLR on the back of the camera, then you can record one source on the XLR and one source on one of the channels that's coming in the side of your camera. So you actually do have a lot of control over audio and that's one thing that I didn't really discover until I started digging around in the menu system. So let's talk about slow motion on this camera because one of the features that I particularly wanted to get this camera for was the fact that you can shoot 4K at 120 frames per second. Now this isn't raw, you shoot in H.265, so the codec isn't the best to work with. However, you still can get a 4K image that's 120 frames per second. One thing that stands out to me though when you're working with this camera is switching between your ProRes RAW and then your other file formats. Now what's really cool about this camera is that there is just a bunch of function buttons all over this and you can set these to be whatever you want. So I have F4 set up to load profiles. And so if I wanna switch from 4K 120 frames per second back to ProRes RAW, I will bring up the profile, hit okay, load it, and it's gonna take a little while. So one, two, three, four. Okay, now we're back. So it took about 15 seconds to load one profile to the other, and this is because we're switching formats. And then I'm gonna go in here, raw over HDMI is has to be turned on. So 20-ish seconds to go between different profiles when you're going from raw to, you know, a 4K 120 frames per second. So it's just something to keep in mind. You're not gonna be able to click, click a button and go right into variable frame rate if you are shooting raw. It just takes a little bit longer because this camera does shut off in between switching modes, depending on which modes you're switching between. Now, one feature that's interesting is their wide dynamic range. So Zcam has this ability where you can shoot two different shutter speeds and it basically combines the image so you get more dynamic range out of a situation. Now for motion, you're gonna see more jitter in your footage and it might give you some weird artifacts, but it's just something you gotta play around with. And I've been shooting a lot with this wide dynamic range just because I wanted to push this camera and see how much dynamic range I can do and how much color grading I can do with the image. And it's pretty cool how much latitude you can get out of these shots. Now I haven't done any like in-studio tests with like the gray chart, but when I'm outside shooting with like the sun directly in the frame, you can see all the way into the shadows and you can capture most, almost all of the highlights. You know, obviously the sun's a bright glowing orb, you're not gonna capture that, it's just gonna be white no matter what, but you're getting a much better gradation from light to dark versus, you know, having 10, 10 and a half stops that you get on the GH5. So it definitely has much more of a cinematic look to the footage. Now another feature that makes this camera stand out is the dual native ISO. So you have two ISOs 
that are gonna give you the cleanest looking image out of the camera. And in the menus, you can set it up so that when you're switching ISO, you just select between the two native ISOs. And the two dual native ISOs that you get are 500 and 2500 ISO. And if you're using in the wide dynamic range, you get 250 and 1250 native ISOs. So having a native ISO that's higher does allow you to shoot in low light situations and try to avoid some of that noise. So for me, this camera fits well if you're already a Micro Four Thirds shooter. If you already have a whole set of lenses, you're shooting on something like the GH5 and you wanna have RAW, it's a pretty cheap and easy way to dive into RAW video without having to buy a bunch of extra accessories and new lenses or anything like that. So for Micro Four Thirds shooter, this might be a good camera to go after. Also, if you're just looking for a small raw setup, this is with my 25 millimeter on it. This is tiny. I can walk around with this and use it as a run and gun style camera and not have to carry a ton of weight. So like for me, when I'm hiking, backpacking, this gives me the flexibility to have a camera where, yeah, if I need raw for a project, I have it and it's not gonna be this huge massive setup. So I reached out to you guys on Twitter, Instagram, in my community tab, make sure you check that. And I asked you guys if you had any questions around this camera. So Aaron asked, how does it do when not shooting raw for fast and easy turnaround? I think, you know, if you're not shooting in raw, this camera is super easy to use. You could throw it in ProRes, H.264, H.265. So depending on what your workflow is, you can choose the different codecs that will fit to make your life easier. You know, beyond the codec, I think it's just an easy camera to use. Once you learn the menu system, it is pretty quick to navigate because you're gonna have the screen on top of the camera, which can do all your settings, and then your image is here on the Atomos. One cool thing though, if you do get the Atomos, is that you can control your camera now through this screen. I haven't really played around with it yet. I'm waiting for a cable to show up. But basically, all your camera controls are now built into the Atomos Ninja V, so you actually don't have to touch your camera. Bryce asked it, how hard is it to find accessories for this camera? It's not that hard at all. There's a ton of accessories, especially now that the Z Cam has this flagship line, there's a ton of accessories being built for this camera. So if you are wanting to get into the raw game and start playing around with the Z Cam, you can get the low, cheap $1,500 E2 model, and then down the road, you might wanna get the 6K full frame version, you know, whatever they come out with, it's great because it's all built on this one system. Legendary Life asked the most important question, when can we ever afford something like that? Well, this camera's actually not that expensive and it's cheaper than a lot of cameras that are coming out now. Like I said, $2,500 without lenses, you know, you put in like 3,000, 3,500, you're gonna have a solid setup that shoots raw, 4K 120, just a ton of flexibility with a tiny camera. For me, where I see this camera fitting in is basically if I want to have more creative control over my image, so I'm doing something where I wanna get more of a cinematic look, this would probably be the camera that I would choose. But then I would also bring along a GH5 with me so I can flip between both bodies. Like, if you have a very controlled lighting situation, you don't necessarily need that crazy dynamic range. But if you are in situations where the light's fluctuating and you have tons of different range in the background and you wanna make sure that things aren't overexposing and you wanna get the full depth of everything, then yeah, I would shoot the Z cam because the Z cam's gonna give you a more cinematic looking shot easier. Like it's gonna take less effort to be able to get some really good looking images out of this camera, partly because you have so much flexibility in post. Guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts around this camera. Do you have any other questions about this camera specifically? I might have some projects coming up where I'm gonna be shooting entirely on this, so maybe I'll shoot a vlog in RAW and see how it goes. Probably won't go that well.